Hi folks. So it's a bit nippy this morning, um, but we're finally going to go and get the Mark III MX-5 weighed. So we'll find out, find out how much it weighs, get our baseline for our weight along with the power that we got the other week. Um, it made 172 brake horsepower. So let's see what, what it weighs. Um, I think these sort of weigh around about 1100 kilos, something like that. Um, the foldy hardtop jobblers are maybe about 40 kilos more. So see what this one weighs. I think my guess was 1095. I've been optimistic. It's definitely going to be, definitely going to be below 1100. Um, we've got some fuel in the tank, so uh, let's get it open, get it started um, and see. We've got, oh crikey, we're rich. <laughs> we've got three quarters of a tank. Um, right, okay, so I should imagine by the time we get to Adams, who's going to kindly weigh it for us. Uh, I think it'll be about half a tank, maybe a little bit more. So, what have we got? 50, 50 litre tank. Let's say it's three fifths full, 30, 30 litres. Um, oh, I might need a phone for this one. I can't do this in my head. <laughs> 30 litres times 750 grams for a litre of petrol. So, 750 times 30. 22.5 kilos so whatever it says on the uh, corner weight scale we're going to take 22.5 kilos off the fuel um, and that's what we've got i'm going to take the hard top off um, we're not going to use it with the hard top on so right 1095 is my guess dan my brother dan he went for 1030 he went really optimistic um, and I think they sort of had a bit of a range between those two and then probably up to about 50 kilos more in the uh, in the comments on the last video so we'll see see who's right I'm really happy it's under 1100 kilos and I really hope we can lose a little bit more weight um, to get down to maybe 10 70 or something that would be quite good i think i think that'd be quite good for a mark three um quick run over the modifications for the weight uh so it's got the roll bar in we've obviously lost the oem roll hoopy bobblers um and we've lost a few trim bits at the back there um so maybe that nets out or maybe we've gained a little bit of weight there um the boot trim stuff's gone the spare wheel's gone don't know if it had one but it's gone if it did um, the rest of the cabin is all standard bar the steering wheel, which is a aftermarket job. Um, it's a non-height adjustable seat, uh, fabric seat with, it's got airbags in the seat, um, unfortunately. Um, what else? We've got an exhaust manifold and an exhaust. So I should imagine there's a fair saving over OEM with those bits. Uh, the standard cat and all of that jazz is, is probably quite heavy. Um, anything else? Oh, lightweight wheels. I mean, the OEM wheels are light, so we've probably not lost too much because the tyres are a little bit bigger and so probably gained a bit of weight. Um, coilovers might be a touch lighter, probably offset by the anti-roll bars that are a bit thicker. So I think it's going to be about what a standard car weighs. It'd be nice if it's just a touch lighter through those exhaust modifications. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what it is. So next video will be at Adams we'll probably take a few little clips um, whilst we're weighing it um, and then I'll report back and, and let you know how we get on Hi again folks, so just like that, we're back. Um, we went over to Skeg Vegas, Skegness to see Reedy at uh, Skegness Tires and Exhaust Centre. Uh, good chap, squeezed us in this morning to have a quick uh, quick go on the uh, corner weights to see what it weighs. And it weighs less than we thought. It's a light boy, it is a light boy. So the number on Adam scales was 1086. But as we mentioned earlier, we, we actually had more, more uh, fuel left by the time we got there than, than I anticipated. But 
if we use a, the uh, the earlier number to give like I don't know five liters or so left in the tank, um, we're left with one thousand and sixty three kilos, which is which is pretty light. I think I think that's really light. Lightweight baby. I'm right happy with that. Made up with it. Um, yeah, I mean. There's not much fuel in the tank at that point. Maybe stick, you know, quarter of a tank, maybe 1073 with a quarter of a tank or something. But yeah, 1063 with, you know, five litres or so of fuel is absolutely mega. We're chuffed with that. <laughs> the benefits of having a poverty spec car without all these exciting extra speakers and leather bits on. Um, but yeah, that's mega. Made up with that. So my aim of getting down to 1070, we're already there. We're already there. So... <laughs> Let's see how far we can get it. Um, with it being corner scales, we could see what the cross weights were like and stuff. Um, with a driver in, a slightly hefty driver, uh, the total weight with a driver was, here we go, uh, a sliver under 1080 uh, with myself in, um, and of course the fuel in the car. And the cross weights were... 49.3% so the car's not been set up it's not been corner weighted or anything so that's that's not bad to be honest uh, we'll take that um nothing else really stood out to be honest it's um slightly um front biased weight um I don't really pay all that much attention to front rear weight distribution I think it's sort of over egged I think people jump on the oh the 50 50 weight distribution thing a little bit too heavily um if a car drives well it drives well um, and the balance of these cars is very good, so I'm, I don't, I'm not going to try and shuffle weight around to try and improve that. It's uh, it's good. Uh, we could corner weight it if we wanted to optimize the, the cross weights, um, but will we bother? It's not a race car, is it? Um, so we'll see. And every time we change something, every time we use a bit of fuel, the corner weights change. And every time I gain five kilos or lose five kilos or we swap drivers, it changes anyway. So 49.3% on the cross weights, I think it's pretty damn good. Um, next week, I'll probably be a slightly different weight or I'll have had a big poo or something. And so <laughs> the cross weights will have changed. So sod all of that, let's just enjoy it. But yeah, 1063, we'll call it, which means of course, we're on a mission, aren't we? We've got to get to 1050, surely got to get to 1050 what can we do to do that uh well the obvious answer is we can lose the battery weight can't we um it's still got an original battery in so let's yeah a golf cart battery or something we've used in the past or we could be a little bit more a little bit adventurous this time and do it a little bit more properly with a nice little lithium iron one um we'll see a bit of weight to be gained to be lost there um and we can probably lose a few kilos here and there with a bit of careful um, consideration. What we're not going to do is strip the car out. Uh, we've lost a few trim bits behind us, but you know we don't worry about that really. We, you don't notice it, um, and when you're driving it, you certainly can't see it. So, but what we're not going to do is strip out carpets and get rid of the door cards and stuff like that. It's, it's quite a nice place to be. We can jump in it. I can nip up to Tesco's in it. I can go to the gym in it and it's quite usable. I like to be able to get in the car and use the car. So we're not going to negate that. We're not going to um, lose that, sorry, and um, for the sake of a few kilos. So we'll see if we can find a good way of losing a little bit of weight um, and get us down to the 1050. But yeah, absolute result that 1050 kilos. Oh, let's do power to weight, baby. Let's do the power to weight. 1063, we said, didn't we? And 172 brake horsepower. Time, I don't know. 172 divided by... 172 divided by 1.063. Drum roll, big number. <laughs> I used to do these calculations for, like, for other cars, and they'd be like 270 or 300, or in the case of some of Dan's things, Getting on for 500. 162. <laughs> oh, well, it's not going to uh, not going to blow your doors off, is it? But um, 162. We'll see where we can go from there. If we can lose maybe a little bit of weight and get in a little bit of power, we'll see how we can progress from there. Um, brilliant. I'm right happy with that result. Um, 
what should we do next time? I think we'll probably, next video, we'll discuss the wheel and tyre combination we settled off. You'll no doubt have noticed what wheels we've got on the car. And in the previous video, I've probably mentioned what tyres we had. But I'll talk about why we chose that. Um, and from there, I think we'll probably start to think and talk about what we're going to do to get a little bit more power out of the old girl. So keep your eye out for that. And in the meantime, let's just do a bit of bonus footage because I've just fitted a lovely, lovely steering wheel. So I'm going to flip this round and um, show you what I've just fitted. I've had top out so you can see it, but look at that beauty. Oh yeah. Momo Monte Carlo, 320 mil, really nice. I'd love to put a red horn button on there, so. We'll do that, I'm sure, because I really like them on these, but very nice. Feels a good size. Feels really classy, like that. We'll probably put that last screw in as well. Right, until next time, see you soon.